sounds a lot like oh, iridescent. iridescent, but it's, it's actually a word, it means becoming green. Reduce, reuse, recycle. Just one action can make a difference. The future is in your hands. <laughs> so at school, we've heard these messages at numerous climate change presentations. Yet no one takes action. And once we leave the building, everyone just goes back to their old ways. Too many people are unaware or uninterested in our declining environment and end up continuing harmful behaviors. Now, do not fear. We've devised a solution. Our app, Ecotropolis, is our method of fighting this problem. It's 2050, and the Earth has been ravaged by a climate change disaster. Now, as one of the few survivors, it's your job to rebuild the city while keeping in mind the environmental effects of every one of your actions. Now the future really is in your hands. The first step is information. With our app, we use a game format so that users learn while playing. Looking through app markets, we found two apps with a few similarities to our app, City Story and Happy Planet. Ecotropolis has both the city building aspect from City Story and the environmental education aspect from Happy Planet. However, our graphics are more sophisticated as we are not targeting only children. In addition, Ecotropolis is more relevant to reality. Players need to make decisions in the game that people make in real life as well. And we provide them with green tips to teach and to decrease their carbon footprint. Our target audience is 10 to 24 year olds. Now, this may seem like a very broad target audience range, but we asked 10 year olds and interviewed 24 year olds, and the majority showed an interest in our app. Just in the US, there are 85 million that fall into this category. Our goal is to attract at least 1% of this 85 million, which is 850,000 people. We also hope to go international. Now, as you can see, we have three options for monetization. But we've decided that the best choice is to have a free version with ads and a paid version without ads for 99 cents. If we reach our goal of the 1%, we calculated that the total profits will be about $848,000. Now, what are we going to do with all this money? Well, first, there's our app. We want to add better graphics, lots of more new levels, um, and twists like money and zombies. We'll active, also actively promote it via social media, so people like because people like to compete with their friends. But our idea goes way beyond just a uh, game. We want to inspire change. We want to inspire action from our users. We'll be partnering with. Uh, companies going green like Toyota Prius and um, other places more local to the users so like for us like Sprouts Organic Farmers Market um, this these places and other information like the daily tips will be personalized through a user profile feature where users can earn points for their green actions the more or better you go green the more points you can earn, and maybe one of our partners, like Starbucks, might reward you for doing so well. Um, but also, we want to donate part of our profit to charities that support the environment, like the National Wildlife Foundation, and users will have easy access to donate as well. Because we want our app to be part of something bigger, the green movement. We want to create a game that really catches fire and um, catches fire, and encourages people to make a change. Thank you. Cool. I used to be in sustainability, so this is really cool. Um, so my question is, um, how, how do you get more and more people to, to play this game, and how, how do they play with each other? Or are they, do they? <laughs> Um, so we, when we, we want to introduce it into the Android marketplace, but we also want to use social media sites like Facebook and Twitter so that we, we could advertise on those sites, but we could also use the word of mouth. And we also have class e in our school just for like a small um, audience right there where we can send pe ask people to try out our thing. Um, 
feel like this is something that parents might want to get for their kids because they want their kids to learn. And so they, for the, they, the parents will find a lot of use in this game too. But in the game, do you see one person playing by themselves? Or do you see a lot of people playing together? Or um, like we considered having um, a multiplayer mode, but I think it would be really get really complicated, and I think that would be good for future plans. Um, but right now, it's just the one user. So the uh, the consumer has a lot of choices when they have some time to spend to play a game. They have Angry Birds. They have whatever other games are popular now. What, what's going to make people open your game and play it when they have five minutes to play, rather than Angry Birds or Words with Friends or Draw Something? Um, well, that's why we included the city building aspect, because we wanted it to, to be a game so that people get addicted to it, hopefully. Um, but that's why we also wanted to include things like zombies, even though they might not be that realistic. But that's more than that. We wanted to include money and government. So it's kind of like a Sims game, where you're in a virtual world. Um, we couldn't really recreate those graphics on App Inventor, but um, that's what we would hope to have. Um, so we feel that, yeah, if it, it would draw on you to tell me. Oh, and just Sims is really popular. Like, they have so many, like, packs that you can add on to it. And I have, like, three, so. 